Welcome. Thanks for joining. Well, we all have heard the term from the World Economic Forum of you will own nothing and you will be happy. And there are also all these green initiatives going on about expropriation of properties in the case of non-compliance with zero carbon emission targets by the European Union and others. But how could this now all play out? How would it be possible to take your property from you? Or even better, how you would give it up happily? It is clear that a government would not be able to take all houses by force, somewhere the people would need to live, but maybe there is a sneaky way to take your property legally from you but without you having to leave. You would just become a tenant in your own house. Maybe you would even be allowed to live there for free to ease the ownership loss for you. This is of course completely theoretical and just a fun thought experiment, so don't take this too serious. I have learned to think in scenarios and this is just one that may tick all the boxes for our controllers, but stay tuned to the end. It is worth it. So diving into this, the truth is that as long as you have a mortgage on your house or flat, or even just a property tax or energy bill to pay, you don't really own your property because it can be taken from you by either the mortgage lender or the government. Same as with any other form of taxes, health care, or even food that you have to pay for. Whenever you are running out of cash, you are at risk of losing your property. But it is not just about the ongoing bills. There are also ways you can be expropriated from your home even if you pay all your bills. For this, you need to check your mortgage paperwork for the terms under which your mortgage lender is allowed to push you into foreclosure or to take the property from you. Most likely, the ability of the mortgage lender to take your home is not just given by missing out mortgage payments, but also if the general risk environment has changed and if the value of the underlying security, your property, has decreased significantly. This rule applies as far as I know to pretty much all countries like the United States, United Kingdom, Germany and Europe, Australia and New Zealand and so on. Here is as an example a translated extract from the German law. Deterioration of the financial situation of the bank customer, according to Article 490 Paragraph 1 BGB, the bank may terminate a loan without notice if the customer's financial situation deteriorates or there is a threat of deterioration and this jeopardizes the repayment of the loan even if the collateral is realized. So this means that the bank has the right to terminate your mortgage if the value of the property has fallen so low that your equity has been lost. As most people have let's say 10% to 30% equity in their property, this means if the property markets have declined more than that amount, that the mortgage lender can ask for immediate repayment of the mortgage amount. But it can also be in regards to the worsening of your financial situation. Maybe the energy bills are high, or the interest rates have gone up to 10% or the economy has tanked or you get divorced but it gets even better. The mortgage lender does not have to wait for that deterioration to happen. As outlined there, it should be noted that even the threat of deterioration is sufficient. The deterioration does not therefore have to have already occurred. The bank can therefore also terminate the contract preventively. What is required, however, is a high probability of deterioration. So it does not really matter if you have a 30-year mortgage at 2% interest for 50% of the property value. The risk not only lays with mortgage renewals, if things get bad, the mortgage lenders can still cancel or demand change of your mortgage terms, even if it is a fixed rate mortgage and you have not missed any payments at all. It only requires simply a new risk assessment by the mortgage lender, maybe the industry as a whole, as a result of a worsening economic outlook and a bit of desperation on their end. Further, it is up to the lender to decide how they would proceed with this in such case. They could ask you to pay 20% of additional equity. Or they could say because you are such a valued customer, you can keep the property if you just pay 10% interest, which has become the current interest rate, so 8% more than what the original mortgage was given out for. This because it is too much of a gap to the current market rate in case you took out a fixed rate 2% mortgage for 30 years. But now the current rates have increased to 10%. So you will have the freedom of choice to accept the now 10% interest rate on your mortgage or to lose your property. Not to forget, you as an individual will usually not be able to change the mortgage terms to that extent. But the banks have that somewhere in the fine print of their mortgage contract or their terms of service agreements. This means that under normal circumstances, a fixed rate mortgage is quite safe. But if things get tough, then you are by no means protected from potentially nasty surprises. Even if the bank itself does not have such provisions, if it gets bankrupt as a result of the worsening economic conditions and your mortgage is acquired by another institution, maybe government-owned, maybe private, they also have most likely the right to renegotiate or dictate the terms of all the individual mortgages they got. So that was the expropriation risk in case of a property crash or general worsening economic outlook. 
The next part is the expropriation as a result of not complying with climate admission objectives. As I outlined in an earlier video, the European Union and other countries are drafting laws that would allow them to remove your right to live in your house if it does not comply with the zero emission targets set by them. The possibility for the government to enforce this probably depends also a bit on how many property owners there are in the country where they try to roll that out. In the so-called rich Germany, for an example, the home ownership rate is less than 50%, so half of the population would not even care about a law against home ownership as they are already renters. Most would probably actually like it when the so-called rich homeowners get their property expropriated to have more so-called social equality. In other countries, the home ownership is a lot higher, so it might be more difficult to enforce it there. Either way, if the law of the country requires banks to consider the emissions of a property in order to provide a mortgage for it, then the banks will have no choice. This way people would not be able to take out a mortgage or extend an existing one and therefore they would be forced to sell it. But the best option to achieve this would be the following. So let's say the economic conditions are continuing to, to deteriorate over a very long period of time. Let's say 5 or 10 years, so there is not a short crash and then a recovery. Instead, there would be continuing tensions and war between Western nations and the BRICS plus countries, or at least a Cold War. The supply chains collapse and most people become unemployed due to the entire range of small to medium-sized businesses being forced into bankruptcy. And this at the same time, as cost for everything increases, which then forces the central banks to raise interest rates far beyond everything they have seen in decades not only to address the inflation caused by the broken supply chains, but also because the BRICS plus nations are the major energy and commodity producers, and they don't really need or want paper US dollars that we print anymore. So in order to keep some of the currency's value, the central banks would be further forced to increase rates and to keep them high as well as reducing the money supply. So this would end the printing option and would lead to a very severe liquidity crisis that on its own could force banks to recall their loans and mortgages in order to delay their own bankruptcy. Maybe interest rates under such conditions are reaching 20%, hard to say. Or there was a partly exchange of nuclear weapons, real or not, and large parts of the countries are declared as no longer suitable for human settlement. That would actually be another theoretical scenario, so in that environment, and if it is dragged on for a long time, then sooner or later everybody will fail with their mortgage payments. They might even not have the food or the money to buy it, so owning a property might not be the highest priority for many. This is the big danger if we, as society, diverge from the objective to achieve maximum freedom and prosperity for the individual, and we replace it with the doctrine to reduce consumption overall. Because with that new target, governments have no longer the incentive or the objective to have an evolving, rich society and to secure property or basic human rights. In such a society, the benefit is to have as many poor people as possible because they will consume less which is the target and losing a few people along the way is also a desired outcome in such of course completely hypothetical system. But this just as a side note. Anyway, coming back to the property expropriation, so if many people fall short on the mortgages, then the institutions who lend them will also fall into bankruptcy. In this case, I mean all commercial banks and mortgage lenders. So the government would likely step in to create a new entity that would hold all the mortgage contracts. Due to the bad economic environment, they will then of course tell their citizens that they don't have to worry about losing their home. They can just continue living there as tenants or maybe even for free initially. So for a homeowner, there might not be any change in the beginning. They would still live in their property. Maybe initially they even have better terms than before, much less economic stress and things to pay. Only the ownership would have changed. It would be no longer the private property owner. Now the government or the created institution will own all of these properties and the carrot of not having to pay rent might be the argument to calm the citizens for their loss of property ownership. A rent payment could be demanded five years later as an example or it increases gradually over time. As the new property owner, the government can then do all the energy efficiency upgrades they like. Also, they can reshake their cities with the 15-minute city model that has become the desired outcome. And most importantly, the government did not expropriate anybody. It was the bad economy, the tensions with these bad other countries that have put everybody into poverty. The government was here to help. They are the good ones. They have provided free housing and nobody had to lose their home in theory as they are still living in them. So with such a scenario, all objectives could be achieved. 1. Consumption will be reduced. 2. Small to medium-sized businesses will be integrated into a platform economic model owned by the big corporations. 3. 
All properties will be thankfully given up by the people because they will be relieved from all the economic stress. 4. The government would look as the savior, letting all the people live in their properties for free. At least initially. 5. All green goals and city reshaping goals can be achieved. 6. As all commercial banks became bankrupt, central bank digital currencies can be rolled out. 7. This scenario would further trigger high crime rates which could be used as an argument for more stringent government surveillance and media control. So highly fragmented and conflict-driven world seems to be something that is actually highly helpful in achieving the desired outcome of less consumption and elimination of property ownership if such is an objective. Not to forget what was said about Putin not too long ago. When I mention our names like this Merkel, um, even uh, Vladimir Putin and so on, they all have been young global leaders of the World Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. So maybe in this overarching scheme, they are actually all working together on achieving these desired objectives for their countries respectively and the world overall. How else would you otherwise be happy for being relieved from the burden of property ownership? Or giving up all the variety of endless different products and choices or your human rights for that matter that we have today more or less. For that, things have to become really bad and to stay really bad for a long period of time. So that in the end, when you finally gave up on your property, you will actually be really happy and relieved. Will this be how it is done? Hard to tell. As I said, this is just a theoretical thought experiment that I, together with my artificial intelligence-driven macro analysis, it out for fun. But have to admit, it does have some logic to it, I would say. Anyway, hope that was helpful. All the very best to you.